Good morning, everyone. This is Susan Thomas from MexPre, and I'm so excited today to have Kristen Poreca here. She actually, the other day, uh, contacted Vivian Kalman, the animal uh, communicator, and I was so excited to hear what she thought about it. And um, so I just gave her a call and she was just so nice to come on with us. So welcome, how are you? And you're, you are in Spring Grove, Illinois, correct? Correct, yes, I am. And Vivian is in Kansas and I am in Guadalajara. So Vivian kind of explained a little bit how it works, kind of like, you know, video frequencies. But um, all I know is that it worked because I was very skeptical and I didn't give her any information about my horses to be contacted and she was spot on. So I'm real excited to talk to you and see how it went for you and your horses. Good morning. Well, yeah, well good morning. Thank you so much for having me and thanks for letting me uh, share my guy's story. Um, I have Levi, he is a seven-year-old PRE, and then I also have Ed, he is a Frisian Arab paint cross, so uh, he's about 18 years old now, he's semi-retired, uh, he has had some injuries in the past, so he's just kind of living the best life a horse can. Um, I have them both at a full training barn, Ed just kind of hangs out where Levi has got to work for a living. Uh, the reason why I contacted Vivian is because um, with Levi, I got Levi about uh, three or four years ago, and he was a spooker. He was uh, not a real brave horse. Uh, so, and I am, as I'm getting older, I'm realized I am not that brave a rider as I used to be when I was younger. Uh, there's no breaking out horses left for me, and I just wanted something nice and fun to compete with. Um, so I did contact Vivian on that, and her reading was spot on with Levi and Ed. Um, I'll go ahead and start with Levi, and I'm just going to read a little bit of the transcripts that she gave me. Uh, if anybody's interested in working with Vivian, she is wonderful because she reads her horses, but then the next day she'll send you an email with all of the notes detailed on their conversation, and then follow up with a phone call to kind of give more insight so you're not just like mm, what happened what happened so I really did like that aspect of her uh, with yeah, Levi he um he mentions that and and with Levi he, he mentions that my breathing when I'm riding should be more grounded he said if I have a more grounded way of breathing that will help him ignore the external and behave in a more appropriate way and moving forward. So when Levi spooks, or if he's afraid of something, he sucks back behind the leg. And if you know, if you have a dressage horse looking for upper level movements, they need to be in front of that leg, balanced and shooting forward. Um, so with him, he did mention that when he gets scared, his balance internally and externally does uh, shift. Um, he mentions that he's still just a big kid and something that I did not mention to Vivian is that his ex uh, owner was a fear rider. And so let's see here. When, since uh, my last rider was very fearful, I got used to having her react to things I didn't notice. So I worried about what she might was what she was worrying about, mm -hmm. and he did not feel safe. He can work this out together as a team. And uh, she goes on and she says she will send some grounding, balance, and breathing techniques. And he, Levi, wants me to take an energetic lead and create that feeling that I want for him in my mind and body and after this technique. Um, he also goes on and says that the wind spooks him, and he says that he knows that is ridiculous, but, you know, that, well, you know. Um, and I think, and he, I think that's pretty common in horses, because since they rely so much on their hearing, and the wind really messes that up, I think that's very, very common. Yes, I, th I think so, too. 
And I, I really found this, this is what he said, which I thought was really intriguing. He goes, as the fear developed, it moved from my head to my heart. So it takes me a while to clear that up. Maybe music reinforces and then being grounded. He said he would like some drum warp or classical music with a structure. So a lot of the times I might have some punk rock playing or some crazy music. And apparently he prefers more of a structured musical for him to work so he could probably listen to the balance and the rhythm instead of some something crazy. So I thought that was interesting as well. Yeah, and I um, also think, I don't know if you've ever yeah. found that, but um, you know, when my kids were at home and they do that loud pump rock, I don't even know what you call it. And then they <laughs> talk, you know how the bass is just boom, boom, boom. It really agitates me. And I yes. think maybe since horses are so attuned to the beat and the nature too, it probably, you know, upsets them rhythmically, you know, cause your heart just starts pounding, pounding exactly. and I get really tense and I just have to go down and I said, do I get to <laughs> turn that off? My blood pressure is going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> well, that definitely could be. And then if you yeah. have a fearful horse and as he says, it goes from his head to his heart, yeah. then that could make sense for if you want more of a structure with yeah. my breathing and with external noises. So cool. I thought that was, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And then he also, then he also goes to say that he's very happy to be with us and that he feels good energy. He goes, he feels good when the energy flows in a unified way in his whole being. It is peaceful, calm, and I like it. He feels protected and he's open to doing writing differently. He goes, I want us to be a great team, respect, and care for each other. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And then when I was talking to Vivian, she also thought this was like a really profound thing for a horse to say, being so young, is that he says, that's how I'm there for you, because that's what creates the balance inside me. When I'm scared, it contracts my balance, and my balance evaporates. It's a balance of internal and external in larger field and we could work through this. So I, I'm getting that he really wants to be a partner with you. Oh, and he yes. really, really wants to connect with you. And I just think, you know, because that's what dressage is, it's a partnership and he wants you to be his leader and he's perfectly willing. So, I mean, you've got a lot to work with there. Yeah, I was so excited. And then plus what I feel, so this is science, so cool with Vivian is because what I'm feeling in the saddle is what he is feeling emotionally. So now that I know that's what he's feeling emotionally, I have the correct tools with these exercises that Vivian gave me for slowing my breathing and bringing it more down into my stomach. And not just like, we're not just talking about deep breaths, like, okay, everything's fine. We're okay. Like more like down into your stomach and opening up and looking at the field while you're riding and saying, and I even talk to him now and I go, Hey man, I got you. We're okay. Let's move forward and do some awesome things. We're, we're in this together. And I tell you the last three rides I've had were amazingly more, he was more underneath me and more connected going forward into my hands. Even when he would spook, it was, it's a different feeling if that makes sense at all so and it to me it really does because a lot of times you know when we know when where something's coming from you know the spooking or whatever if we know where it's coming from she's given you a lot more um you know kind of arrows to shoot with right you know what i mean she's given I, you, uh, yeah. just so many more things and that's where me as a writer, I get kind of frustrated with myself because when you come to the end of your arsenal and you're just going like, duh, but oh. she gives you so many more things to use that are really so easy, just like breathing or singing or music or yeah. Yeah. So if somebody would come up to me and I'm like, oh, I have this problem with my horse. And if somebody came and like, well, just change your breathing. That's all you got. I would probably like, okay, you're kind of crazy. Like, I don't know if that would really work if I just changed my breathing. 
But you know what? I got in a saddle and I talked to him. And another thing she said with him, he goes, she said, um, just don't say good boy. Be specific on why he's a good boy. Or you did a really good job with that lateral work. You did a, you know, that's what we're looking for. We want you to bring that left leg underneath. Good job. Yeah. Um, so that was, and that seemed to help him out too. So I am so lucky that I found Vivian. And I have a great um, dressage trainer, Jennifer Strasser, who has put him physically and mentally in a happy, good place where he's open to learning and he's open to work forward and feel safe and protected to go on. Because you've got, you've got 80% of the ingredients right there. You know, if the horse wants to be with you and the horse feels safe with the rider, and the rider it wants to be their leader and whatever i mean problem solved <laughs> That's, uh, and other, so far the other are just buttons or kind of you know what i'm saying yeah. exactly yeah yesterday you know levi was having a, a day my trainer was working with him first and you know he's kind of like oh, okay you know my trainer is amazing she's you know doesn't reprimand him she goes hey man let's go forward you're fine i get on him and before i even get my foot in the stirrup he like spooks and looks at something i'm like oh man not today i don't know if I, I don't know if i want to get on today but you know what i got on and the feeling the energy that i had with him was something i haven't felt last month it was more of a connected feeling even though yeah, he was, it, like, oh. it was it was that good energy versus exactly energy. <laughs> exactly it was yeah. energy that we could work with no now that i know where his sense of being is mm -hmm. and his sense of where things are coming from. So mentally I have a better understanding of him. So I think he's, he's a goofy kid and he's very athletic and he, I think this is going to be a good thing for him having her. Yeah, and it's so cool because you have a wonderful trainer and she's given you an amazing arsenal. But if you just have the other part, because it's not all physical, it's a lot. Right mental and whatever and Vivian can kind of give you you know fill up that arsenal with a few more techniques and kind of help you understand your horse and what may work better than you know other things so I think that's really cool and one thing that I read from you it says having Vivian as a mental voice has really opened up another level of him I it's thought that really, was so cool because I felt the same it, it, about my horses oh it, it was it was amazing how that happened because you know I was a little bit of a skeptic I go okay let's hey, let's see what happens she's gonna tell me he likes to eat apples and likes to get to scratch underneath his mane or something like that but it was so much more deep on his essence in a relationship building yeah. reading than I expected so I thought that was cool and and apparently he really loves our family. He loves my daughter and he likes anything she feeds him. And he just wants to make her happy and laugh. And it is true because he sticks his tongue out uh -huh. and she grabs the side of his tongue. And he is just like, uh, I have a picture of him and her girlfriend and he's literally smiling, like showing his teeth, like he's one of the gang. He's, oh, um, how, how old is your daughter? She's 12. Oh, what a cute age. And oh. so I think they're like kind of the same. As <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just a goofy pre-adolescent. Cool. And, and that's, and you know what, and that's what she said. She said, you know, he's just a big kid at this point. And while I had a phone conversation with her, she also said, you not have, um, communicated through the reading as much as he did because he just wasn't there mentally quite yet he wasn't grown up and feeling knowing what his feelings meant to him so i thought that was interesting as well yeah, because, yeah. cool and yeah. I, think that, I think that's pretty common with um iberians i think they do people get confused because a lot of times like a three-year-old they can look like a 10-year-old and be all buffed up and whatever but usually I find even then that they're late fullness, physically and mentally. Yes. My yeah. dog loves there's, to be part of our conversation. <laughs> 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 well, thank you, well, do you have a few seconds to talk about your other horse? Yeah, yeah, we can work with Ed really quick. Ed, like I said, was my Frisian cross. Um, he's had some injuries in the past, so he's been retired. 
Um, and Ed was very excited to talk about his feelings. Um, he wanted to go first. He kind of, I guess, like butted ahead of Levi during the call. And, <laughs> and he was very funny because he goes, there's more to me than you see. He goes, I take care of you, but that's only part of me. I like to find new ways to express who I am and share with you new experiences. I'm sweet and I'm also smart. I like people more than horses. Maybe that's because how I am mixed. Now, I did not tell her that he was a bottle baby when his mother abandoned him and he was raised by humans. So during his turnout time, we have not found a good match for Ed where he really connected. You know, where you see horses, you know, bonding with each other and chewing on their manes. And, oh, Ed was not that guy. So that was interesting and she also says maybe that's because that's how i mixed he is our only mixed breed in our training barn we have mostly uh pres uh dutch warm bloods and a quarter horse so he feels that his way of thinking is a little different than the rest of the horses in the barn and that, that could that could be actually yeah, and then he also says that he has a different mindset of the other horses, which, you know, he's the re he's my retired guy, and I have a guy who goes to work. So he definitely has a little bit more of a, a mindset. Um, she also said that he has a issue by his tail where his spine is. So we're going to get that addressed later on today and see if that helps allevi alleviate any uh, pain that he has in the back end. But really, she said that she had more of a dog energy than a horse energy when she spoke to him, that he just wants to be more of a companion and be with people and be included more, which I have been guilty. He, I have not been spending the time like, oh, let's bring it out and brush him really quick and hand graze him and then he can go hang out for a while. Yeah. Um, so since I switched that like I switched other things with Levi I kind of switched my way with Ed mm -hmm. and we've just been jumping on him bareback and playing you know we have those big soccer balls we've been kicking the soccer ball around with them and when my daughter has her riding lesson I just bring him out in the arena and let him just hang out and do whatever Ed wants to do so he's included oh, in something so that is so cool yes but he he is definitely my uh my the kid that's like your hey, big station dog your yes. big station dog <laughs> yes that's exactly and then when we go to horse shows i've already talked to my husband like oh we're gonna have to get another stall for ed because he he wants to come he along to hang out <laughs> he just wants to hang out yeah and so uh that's what we're gonna do with ed and she was very you know the things that she said about him wanting to be with people horses that was pretty amazing to me knowing his past that he was a bottle baby yeah that makes a lot of it makes a lot of sense now doesn't it yes yeah and now that i've been spending more time and in including him in lessons and just group activities with the horses when i put him away he's got a lot softer look in his eye his eye is a little bit bigger as well and he just seems to be a little bit more like hey man that was cool yeah, thanks he, he feels loved yeah yeah, yeah. so I thought that was good. And I think wow. talking to Vivian really helped Ed and our lost relationship kind of get rekindled a little bit. So that was nice. Oh, uh, well, that is wonderful. And I really appreciate you taking out time in your day to talk with us about your experience. And if anybody's interested in contacting Vivian, I'm going to put her information um, under the description. So thank you very much. You have a great day. And keep well, us thank posted. You. Keep us posted right. on your journey. All right, we will. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank yes. you. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, bye-bye.